um, and it seems to go with the pattern to try it, but it's just the efficient, so we can fix it back to this point. So it's just um, independent in my own space and link from two people. Mm, this is a uh, image of something like that. And um, you can see that this is a pair of star constellations. And it um, becomes, you can see this picture from here. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to see this, but the uh, rectangle has an eye inside the eye. And also, even though it's Thank you. 
we have a good faith to talk to more customers at different levels of service. But in addition to that, uh, technique, which is different today, we also have different um, physical infrastructure. So before, when we used to have a couple of lines, so it goes from central office to the telephone. There was a limit as to how much data we could press over that line and the only data boundaries that we could obtain. Now, I'd say put a uh, different type of technology in the network. At least having fiber optics on between the in the public space network for a long distance and possibly out to the home or even more out to curb. Um, we're able to put a lot more bandwidth in this uh, connection between customers. The first interpretation of new technology was um, an idea from cyber optics, both in the, in the internal public switch network and bringing it out further and further to get closer to the home. So the statistics on penetration of fiber to the home for the building. It's been um, that it's uh, being more adopted in Norway to have penetration rates to around 20%. Um, so the blue is fiber to the home, it's fiber and orange is fiber to the building. But um, it's, uh, and in some places, like South Korea, things are just um, close to 60 percent. But uh, it, there are other options. So a lot of um, homes in Norway use the wireless communication, and that's another way of getting the data from my system. So the fiber optic line or a physical medium. And before we had um, electrical cables that would like to pop the cables that would connect the phone or coaxial cable. And this um, would bring the data transmission to the terminal devices in the home. But um, with fiber optics, instead of Transmitting the data or the information, electric, electronic um, fluctuations in the signal, they use this light spectrum. It's a different, they use this different wave length. And uh, the various types of technology that's been developed is that they can obtain very high transmission speed. So, the the benefit of becoming fiber optics in the um, telecommunications network is that a lot of data can be transferred and carried on this network. Far more than it could be carried in like 20 years ago. And it's still increasing. So they get a lot out of the infrastructure and can carry a lot of information. So the wireless communications that we use at some point connect to the public switch network where the long um, haul transmissions has to use the fiber optics. Yeah, fiber optic cables go underneath the ocean <coughs> between like the US and India, that takes one of the in the first chapter. And then <coughs> there's also, you can also send things by satellite transmission. People with satellite transmission is delayed. They could see a uh, news person giving an interview on the television, sometimes for a while. Someone will ask them a question, and then they'll spin and wait, and then they get a response. And that's because there's a delay in the time for the signal to go up to the satellite and back down to the So it's a lot, uh, uh, there's no delay. Um, and then for the 
I can't access translation. And this says that uh, we have a, a radio spectrum. This is a spectrum of waves. So everything, um, information is, is transmitted by the way. When we listen to the radio, it's being transmitted by very high frequency waves. FM radio uh, uses um, higher frequency waves than AM radio. AM radio, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's a um, AM radio, I think it is just, um, it is transmitting my voice and some radio is speaking to my voice. Uh, FM radio is good because it covers, um, it has a higher um, capacity, so you get a higher quality sound. So you use the music, the ground from radio where you have music broadcasting. A lot of times I use AM radio because it goes a further distance, further broadcast distance, and it's used for um, talk radio. But now, people don't really care about the AM or FM radio anymore because then now they're using Wi Fi. And then um, they can allocate their enough bandwidth for the service to provide the quality of the business. So a lot of services are being put in here, television, which I'm going to in my first service, and it's a high frequency. And then there's some satellite reception, interception. And what this spectrum tells us is that there is a limited amount of spectrum. We can't create more spectrum. So it's like, oh, this is, um, this is a, the, um, frequency that we produce from it. And it's sometimes we use, like if we use um, RFID tags, we're also using spectrum. And that has to do with um, signaling between the six receivers that might be on the sender of the receiver. So we're always using spectrum when we're sending things without any type of copper wire or fiber optic wire or any type of physical wire. And we're using some spectrum to, to, to send that service. One of the issues that have come up recently is that because there's uh, certain, there's certain uh, spectrum is reserved for public services, like television channels, or that is given to certain uh, providers to, to provide service in those channels, like television and, and communication. But then there's certain bits of their range that can be used by multiple providers. So they're not excluded, they're not excluded, but they're given to one provider. And that talks about some um, um, license exemptions. So um, there is a need because there's a certain range in the country standard. Regulations where people don't get exclusive licenses. But in that range, they need some kind of a sharing policy for how users can make use of the products and the wireless facilities and so on. And what are the trends today? We see that um, in Cisco, they have a full text and then report, and this is from um, they say that global consumers, mobile devices, and consumers, consumer mobile connected devices will grow from 5.4 billion to 7.4 billion in 2016. And um, consumer mobile to mobile connections will grow to 184 million in 2016. And amongst more funds will to the largest consumer mobile device connection and the category growing to 4.7 from 4.7 billion to 5.1 billion in 2016. And then the percentage of mobile consumers with two or more devices will grow threefold to 
more devices, more traffic, more heavy data traffic. The internet data traffic forecast by reason and reading, um, kind of Wi-Fi, mobile, and the like, and the stories of the city, the size, the 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 What does the, uh, what are the different sizes of traffic mean, how much is it? There's one uh, petrobite to 1,000 terabytes, or 250,000 gigabytes. And um, we make uh, examples of 400 terabytes to the digital library to support the study in the event. And so forth. And so they're coming up with different modes and modes of uh, ideas for Taking by a lot of data. But we definitely have you know, big data that's being transferred and different applications that we need for a big data to be transferred. And a lot of this has to be visualization of information and um, um, so just to give an idea of the data. Uh, what is the issue in Europe? The Wi Fi no density is very high. In some places, like the city, it's very high. And um, we are used to thinking of radio spectrum as a linear stream of frequencies. But the spectrum has other dimensions as well, making it possible to share frequencies geographically, temporarily, including use of economic mechanisms. Uh, co modulation, polarization, electricity. So, what they're saying is that the spectrum, we used to really have this limited amount of spectrum. And we used to think that we would use this amount of bandwidth to provide a service to this and it's so. But we can't allow people to just use this system on bandwidth. It has to be shared. So, when it's not in use, or when the spaces that are not being used, that has to be. Um, and there's different ways to do this. You can use different types of modulation. <coughs> and uh, you can separate your research geographically or in time. <coughs> and you can use economic methods. And it says here, you know, before recently, commissioned by this part of the in the London, so the number of private Wi Fi internet access nodes and homes and also some free some. 345 million to 615 to that 15. So, so if that increase spreads in the whole single populated areas, it would lead to a doubling of the London node density, bringing the whole city up to the level of the area around Queen's Park City. So it says that um, the growth is enormous, and it would um, it says that. Um, uh, more likely, future growth will fill in the density gap, gap the density valley, increasing the area more than the intensity of, increasing the area more than the intensity of the congestion. Um, and so, because we don't have to be increasing so much, we need to find out ways to spread out the intensity and spread out the delayed. So the time is running out and they say that uh, the kind of the European community needs to come up with uh, different kinds of policies for sharing this kind of with different licenses from the sector. And um, um, I wanted to say, so I had some kind of um, forecast, which is Download on your 
found different kinds of apps to allow you to see how much decrease it is. Sorry, I was on a long time. I have this crisis basis because it's, um, it's, it's a web that's really specialized with really the like global food tech and all this tech. Um, so I have a um, global internet speed test. It says it's for the gift consumer test measures the download speed of your mobile connecting and Wi Fi. Based on different and current access conditions. In the network routing, traffic loads, and its geographic location may impact the way it's actually If I run the test, it seems that I'm only getting um, like 3 megabytes per second. Um, your connection is strong enough to support high definition and content. And uh, this is actually very low speed. I've had very few that are up to 10 megabytes per second. But I was getting just a single person. And then it has to do with the um, network conditions. So you can um, buy this app and you can put it in the same system. Another thing I wanted to show is that it's not um, I'm not going to show this away. Sets and I'm not going to uh, make it up to the world on the website because it's not my side set. So we have a guest lecture here on connection. And you talk about spectrum sharing and information architecture. And uh, talk about what this means in terms of white spaces and sharing issues. And I wanted to show this picture. This is you know, some of the fatty came in 2005, even a pope was selected by the Vatican Council. And then again in 2013. And what are the differences between these pictures? What are the points of light? <laughs> so, in the short time span from 2005 to 2013, the way people communicate has changed dramatically. Now everybody has to send communication. And not only are they sending data, they're sending pictures, they're making videos, they're sending videos, and they're clicking with a lot of traffic in very highly condensed places. And this is not the communicable, this is the communicable. And if I get worse, that would be the same. And maybe also because there's more people asking to share this survey. And I suppose maybe there's a lot of people watching me on Facebook and I can get this type and it's too far. Too much. Hmm. 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 But um, I tend to go into the uh, mechanics of this. Hmm. But this picture I think kind of is a good demonstrator of what we mean by second sharing. We have a spectrum, which is to be divided in space and frequency and um, time. And if you have a service that's making use of a certain frequency range and any certain amount of bandwidth and a geographic space region and certain frequency range, and it's going to be using the service two hours a day or 24 hours a day, whatever. This may be referred by a television channel, for example. But the television channel in uh, Moldova is going to be using the 
Chinese frequency range is supposed to be somewhere near the sea. And uh, therefore, they can use this to put the separated in the sea. And then the channel is using this frequency range. Then the use can be done in the same thing all day, the same way, because the other channel is using this frequency range. So it is separated in frequency. And this happens to be that the broadcasting channel that I want to use is 24 hours a day. So nobody else can take it. And that's it. But some, um, like when you call it and those particular providers, and others are referred to as spaces that can be shared. And so you want to be able to uh, share this is the secondary access channel. And um, you want to be able to provide this among different types of services to them. So you can use these in different dimensions. You can also use who's willing to pay the most, for example, uh, as another dimension for this the most specific. And then uh, he just gave some examples about uh, how you can find different things in different things. Um, okay, I'll go to the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is also related. Um, the second part of the lecture is to say we talk about how the web services can all into I don't know if I'm heading to the slide, but that was um, prepared earlier by Kai because um, Much uh, earlier than um, than the current information on web services, but uh, I want to I will call the uh, Winnie because he puts in his earlier stuff and it's it's not too exciting to draw. So I think we'll take a break now and I'll draw it up on the board and then we'll talk about the other two next two slides that we can use. I don't know which one it is. Yeah, but I don't know which one it is. 